It's October the 30th, 2017, and I'm going to do some uh, some modeling here <clears throat> with this uh, very simple circuit, and we're going to be modeling the transformer. The, the transformer is what I focus on. We can build voltage amplifiers that go from DC to megahertz, but uh, I think where the rubber beats the road is out here in the in the uh, power amplifier section. Okay. This amplifier uh, right here is uh, uses a uh, transformer that is uh, ideal, and uh, you have to really get down into the nuances of the FFT display. And I don't think the FFT display in this case is ideal, but if we run this. Uh, Let's go ahead and run it while I'm kind of talking here. You can see it running down here. It, it takes a few seconds to run. Uh, we'll get a really good display and it will end up without any second order harmonics, uh, excuse me, any even order harmonics. And um, that's because it's push pull amplifier and it's supposed to suppress even order harmonics. That's why we went there a long, long time ago and got away from these single-ended amplifiers. This is not a uh, this is not to be any kind of video to cause a controversy between push-pull and single-ended, but uh, for whatever you think it's worth. Now, the this amplifier right here is run. Uh, with lower screen voltage, so the uh, 6L6 is actually run as a beam power tube and not as a triode. But we're going to easily and quickly reconfigure it for a triode. Now, of course, you can see that it does not have screen taps, too. It's just a really old style, simple um, output transformer. Almost done here, and then let's uh, let's look at this display. Okay, now we're gonna we, we're just gonna look at the current. We'll we'll look at both voltage and the current. This shows us the voltage. This shows us the current. It doesn't really matter which one we look at. Let's look at the voltage. Nice and clean. Very nice. Okay, we gotta kind of remember this in our head because I can't write all this down and show it in front of the camera. That's 18 volts peak voltage and if we do the current we see the voltage on one side we see the current on the other 2.4 amps 18 and 2.4 okay now let's quickly look at 18 and 2.4 we got to remember that let's look at the uh, let's take that off and, and uh, oh damn did I put it on the right one I may not okay let's stop okay let's do it again view FFT now we want to look at through R1 but when I click on it it seems to go away yeah we want to look just at R1 we want to look at the FFT display of it okay remember 18 and 2.4 we're just going to kind of remember that and there's our FFT display. The second order harmonics, uh, excuse me, I keep saying second, I, I mean to say even order harmonics would be occurring right there. That tiniest of nuance, tiny, 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 I mean, they, they're for all practical purposes, don't exist. Okay? Now, here's 18 and 2.4. Okay, now, what if we change this to the equivalent of a instead of a 5,000 ohm transformer. No, I don't. I don't want to change the name of it. I want to change. Um, I got to right click on it. No, I'm still doing this wrong. I'm sorry. I want to do it on the inductor. Right click on the inductor. I want to change it to what an Acrosound transformer is instead of um, 64 millihenries. We want to change it to about 48.5, 48.5. Um, 
Miller Henry's. Okay, now we're going to run it again. So, all that we've really done is change our transformer from a 5,000 ohm primary to a 6,600 ohm primary. And we're going to let that run. And it takes a few seconds. And then we're going to look at it again. Too bad I don't have a supercomputer here, so it all runs in a in a few microseconds. But we got to just bear with it. Fifty-five percent down here. What we're going to see, because I've already done this, is we're going to see that the uh, even order harmonics start creeping in. What needs to be adjusted here, and I don't know how to do it yet is our FFT display needs a much higher noise floor. This minus 210 dB is just basically unrealistic. 210 dB is two, minus 210 dB is 10 to the minus 21 power. <laughs> that's a little out, that's a little out of space. Okay, let's do our voltage again. It's about the same. See, our, our scale is 20, so it's still about 18, and our current is still uh, about 2.4. So it's it's about the same. It it did slightly change though, didn't it? Our scale over here was 18. It's a little bit below, and it was 2.4, and it's a little bit below. So that, for all practical purposes, we just can't say that it changed. Now let's view our FFT display and we actually all we want to do is CR1 so when I click on things things go away we don't we want just R1 yeah there we go okay see you can see the ever so slightest kink down there because we don't have the perfect match we used to see those little tiniest of nuances of kinks occurring in there mm -hmm. okay that's a little bit of a mismatch we have to continue onward here. We've got the same power level for all for everything that we can measure within a reasonable limit. We have the same power level. Now, let's um, let's go back and change our um, and change our um, keep changing the wrong one. To back to the ideal transformer and make it uh, what did it used to be? Damn, did I write that down? 064 or uh, 0.064. And you can put it in 0.064, you can put it in point, or you can put it in 64M for Millie Henry's. Okay, now we're back to our ideal transformer. But in this case, we're going to go up here with our scissors and cut out this stuff right here. We don't need this. And we're going to go to the uh, we're going to go to triode mode and we're going to let's hook it straight to the plate because we're not going to try to redraw this transformer while I'm running this. Okay, let's get this thing simulating again. Oh shoot, what have I done wrong now? I've got to, let's see, I guess i got to get rid of some more stuff. I've already done this once, so it actually should run. Now why, did, why, why am I having that? Node 7 is floating. What is my floating node now? Dad gimmick. I had really good success on this earlier. And now I've got a floating node. Node seven. You do have to watch this stuff very carefully because um but I didn't I didn't take a component out of there. 
Oh, 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 right there it is, right there, look. This, this can really bite you, and it's just bit us. You see that wire right there? It's not connected. It's not connected. But if we go right there and do that, and then we do that, now it's connected. <sighs> Get beat up by the tiniest of things. Okay, now we're running these uh, 6 all 6s in triode mode. And a while ago we had 18 volts peak and we had 2.4 amps peak. Remember that? Let's see what happens now. And we have the, the, the correct 5,000 ohms again, which actually may have changed. Uh, connecting these 6L6s in triode mode actually may not uh, present a 5,000 ohm load anymore. When you connect a beam power tube like this, these are not pentodes, they're beam power tubes, to uh, an ultra linear circuit actually running the tube in a triode mode. There we go. We're almost finished here. So let's see what this one looks like. Let's see if we can detect anything down there. And once we um, improve, there's our voltage. Look what our voltage dropped to. 8 volts peak. Instead of 16, it's 8. That's a And our current is uh, 1.0 amps. Wow, we've dropped to a we've dropped a lot of power. So we have gone way down. Now let's look at our FFT display. I mean, we want to look only at R1. And there it is. Well, that little kink over here disappeared. So it looks like uh, we improved our um, frequency domain display. We didn't make it worse. I don't know if that's third or whatever that would be. That would be, that's 200 hertz, two, four, six, eight, 800 hertz, baby. Hmm. But anyway, this one right here is the most important one. The most important ones are the biggest ones. Ones with the most power in them. Once you get out here, you know, we're dealing in decibels here, so the difference between here and here is, is uh, well, let's see, this is 60 dB. This is, I don't know if that's quite 90. Look look at our scale, 30 dB. 30 dB is a power factor of 1,000 to 1. So when we drop from here to there, we've dropped by a factor of 1,000. There you go. Okay, so our um, our triode gave us a lot less power at uh, pretty much the same thing. The one thing that we did eliminate, the thing that we did gain, is the fact that we do not have to have a screen supply. That's good. That simplified our circuit. Okay. So with that said, <coughs> where do we take this? Triode versus uh, um, beam power tube. And let's do one more. Let's do one more thing. If, if, if we did see any nuance there, let's change this value back to the value of like the Acrosound transformer at like uh, 48 and a half minute millihenries, that'd be 0 .0485, 0 .0485. Okay, now we've got to run it again. I don't know if we're going to see enough difference here. I'm not sure we're going to be able to see any difference here with the um, the scale of the FFT display, but we'll see what we think we might be able to see here. 
I guess what I'm getting at here is that the um, when you run these 6L6s as a beam power tube and you have say in the, our case 415 volts on the plate and I don't remember what it was like 250 volts on the screen the efficiency of the tube is actually much higher well that was obvious from what we just saw about the voltage and the current that we're getting out over here into our load and now that we've changed it to a triode we eliminated one power supply so that's really nice that makes things a whole lot simpler but we dropped our power considerably okay and then we left our um, our plate load the same now we've changed our plate load we've raised it slightly we raised it from 5k to 6.6k let's see if we can see any difference here let's look at the same thing again let's look at the voltage still 8 volts that didn't change because we're still running it in triode mode and let's look at the current 1 amp that didn't change let's see if we can glean anything from the FFT display we'll look at R1 only R1 well we have we have, we have virtually nothing down there we had some tiny ones right here I believe it actually cleaned it up ever so slightly if this could be improved I think we could actually see what we're uh, what we're trying to gain so if I'm reading this right what has happened is when we have gone from a, a beam power tube a 6L6 running the plate at one voltage and the screen at a much lower voltage we have a plate load of about 5k of 5k not about but 5k and then when we run it in the so-called ultra linear mode which is a triode mode and we run the screen at the same voltage as the uh, plate then um, the impedance of the circuit the impedance of the two tubes has risen from 5k to 6.6k so we need to raise the uh, plate to plate impedance of our uh, matching transformer and we did it in this case by actually in modeling it by changing the uh, the secondary inductance so there you go triode versus beam power tube not pentode but beam power tube you know the pentodes are like the EL34 the EL34 is a true pentode it has three grids and uh, the third grid is always grounded I've never seen it any other way that's the British version and the American version is the 6L6 which the third grid so to speak is actually a beam forming plate it's beam forming plates that are internally connected to the cathode so which one is which I don't know now can we model this with EL34s oh yeah well we can well we can uh, drive this on and I don't know and I really love it so let's see what happens but let's examine this one and think about it for a while and then we'll uh, go on to the next one there you go for what it's worth